Uh, it's not something that is initiated by you know few giants in the e-commerce. It's actually an initiative by Indian government, right? It's in similar in lines with UPI, right? You have you've seen UPI started in 2015-16, and today we are probably one of the you know you know today probably we are one of the uh, most transacting digital you know uh, payment transacting company country in the world, right? So, so that is basically the power of UPI as of today, and and that is what ONDC is expected to, you know, do in e-commerce space, right? Like what happened in UPI is is expected. That impact, similar kind of impact, or maybe more, uh, in e-commerce uh, in ONDC, right? So, so that's uh, that's what it is, and and you might have seen all this buzz in media, right? Uh, a lot of us, a lot of people are talking about it. Like, uh, you know, um, you know, Google is in talks to join ONDC, right? Google, like of all the people, Google is in talks to join ONDC. Flipkart, Reliance, Amazon, uh, Shopify, you know, you know, logistics place like Dunzo, Delivery, uh, Phone Pay, uh, you know, even you know, company like Unilever, Dabur. You name it, uh, you know, everyone is excited about ONDC, right? So it's something that you definitely, uh, you know, uh, will hear a lot. This is just a start, right? You will definitely hear a lot about it in, uh, in, in coming days. And, uh, and, uh, and uh, you know, how it will impact, right? Uh, that also will be, you know, clearer. Today, you know, we, as, as you know, when when did ONDC start? ONDC started sometime similar time last year. It's been twelve months. Uh, started with the simple, you know, few few players. You know, not not a lot. Um, they did like a pilot transaction. You know, in April of this year. So it's it's very new. It's not something that is very very uh, matured. It's not something that has been there for years. It's actually just one year old, uh, you know, and 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 it's starting to shape right now. It's actually a lot of players who who joined in last few months only, right? Um, and they're building solutions around it. They're building. They're becoming part of it. Uh, so so it's still taking shape, but but exciting, very very exciting. So what is the goal of ONDC, right? Uh, when when government you know, we started this, you know, what, what was their goal? You know, goal was to increase the e-commerce penetration. That is the goal of ONDC, right? Uh, that, you know, 12 million Kirana stores should be part of ONDC. Uh, instead of 4% e-commerce penetration, you know, in the retail, it should be 25%, like, like happens in China, you know, in, or Korea today, right? And instead of 20,000 pin codes, uh, the coverage of uh, e-commerce should be like 75%. Should cover like more than 75,000 to 1 lakh pin codes in India, right? So that's basically the goal of ONDC, right? Now in that goal, how does the goal of a supplier and a goal of a buyer, you know, uh, because unless the goals of all these entities are in line, you know, the things are not, you know, the, the, the initiative is not successful, right? The supply goal is is very clear. Increase my revenue. Right? That's basically what I want. I want to increase my revenue. Right. So that's basically uh, from ONDC. Uh, if I am a supplier, I would be I would be looking at you know, boss, please increase my revenue. That's what I'm looking at. Right. From a buyer's perspective, right? Buyer is uh, interested in better price, right? Better quality. I want a better quality. I don't want frauds. I don't want cheap products. Right. I want faster delivery. And I want more selection, right? So that's basically how the goals of each of these, uh, you know, um, uh, of uh, entities uh, who play a role in e-commerce are there. And they all three have to be aligned. Ha all three have to work together. Otherwise, ONDC will not be successful. Right? Now, coming into the the deep dive into ONDC, right? Uh, this is like the broad overview. It's a government initiative. Is something we started a year back, still very new, uh, still a lot, lot of questions around it, right? But what is ONDC? Let, how, you know, let's get into the architecture of ONDC, right? 
so this is this is what you see when you go to a website right this is what you see this you see a web store a front web store where you see all the products and 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 you want to basically transact on that um, website right but but basically if you look at behind the storefront right the the primarily you know there's a layer there's a website which is what you see on in front behind that is a platform which basically uh, is doing all the logic of 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 uh, e-commerce right and behind that is supplier who basically are dispatching supplying the product and those kind of stuff right and and that basically is 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 the behind the scene right right now what is happening today as of today what is happening is the flipkart has that structure it has a storefront it has a platform and then it has suppliers amazon has a similar thing swiggy also has the same thing walmart big basket and a, let's say a, a kirana store who has opened a e-commerce store also has the same thing right it's pretty much everyone has a similar structure but they are all siloed they're not talking to each other right that's that's basically is what is happening as of today right sorry one sec uh, one sec i had some issue there yes. yeah jumped so basically there are a lot of silos in the in 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 the in the e-commerce today they're not talking to each other right flipkart system doesn't talk to amazon system it doesn't talk to big basket system it doesn't talk to uh, swiggy system right and uh, and basically uh, uh, that is that is what is today you know uh, what is happening and and a lot of these players like flipkart amazon they have a lot of lot of money right and there are a lot of concentration of buyer right flipkart has a lot of buyers amazon has a lot of buyers right but supply concentration is not a lot right there are only very few suppliers who get a lot of orders on all these platforms right so a small supplier a small uh, you know uh, kirana wala or some some small seller in some small city is not able to participate in e-commerce because there is a buyer concentration so they can't get traffic to their website right because all the traffic is going to flipkart and they can't participate on flipkart or amazon because they they have their ranking systems and those kind of stuff which basically promotes few sellers while other sellers don't don't get a lot of orders and those kind of stuff right so that buyer concentration and seller you know uh, not able to participate is basically one of the bigger biggest problems right now in e-commerce and that's what that's what basically is uh, is 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 creating that we have this huge set of you know suppliers who are not able to participate in e-commerce there are only few very few big giants who are able to participate but but not a lot of lot of these small small you know suppliers and 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 how can you know so so government started thinking people started thinking how how do we make it happen like like what what happened in upi where every small pani puri wala and every small uh, retailer today has is able to provide a payment solution to its consumers you know what what can we do in in e-commerce and that's basically uh, is how do we break the monopoly how do we break this this monopoly which has been created uh, where people are not able to participate Be and because people are not able to participate right they are impact on the buyer side consumer is not able to uh, you know uh, is is limited in terms of demand generation in the way that i don't have a lot of choices i not i'm not able to discover my neighborhood i don't know what is there in my neighborhood i am only looking at big basket i'm looking like you know uh, uh, amazon and flipkart i'm not looking at what's available in my neighborhood 
so how do we break that monopoly so so essentially the buyer is able to if buyer can you know if sellers can each of the sellers can participate in e-commerce in a fair fair way you know everyone wins everyone wins right so 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 democratize right which means that everyone can participate right that's one principle on which ondc is built everyone can participate not not the few sellers not few giants everyone can participate right so democratize everyone has the right to vote everyone participate in voting right and decentralize decentralize means no one has no one has there's no there's not a single entity in in middle who is controlling who is like creating monopoly who has a lot of power right so decentralize if we democratize and decentralize then the solution you know we can think of a solution so these two principles are very important in ondc as basically built on these two principles which is basically letting everyone to participate and then break the value concentration which has happened in 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 these big monopolies that been created by creating mechanisms to participate right and then self heal if there's a issue in the system it should self heal it should it should correct itself right so so basically that's that's how the ondc principles are and 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 we'll see that how ondc is trying to do that right because very it's actually if you look at it very revolutionary what is happening so it's very very revolutionary what what's happening in ondc because i have been in e-commerce for last 11 years and what i can see here is that they have created a system which is it can it's very scalable it's it's it, it, it actually can work right so 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 if you look at flipkart and and any of these they have storefront for buyers and dollar sign here is the value right they, that value is there if a lot of people are coming the value is in the storefront right they have a platform which they have created over 11 years that has value and then they have created suppliers you know that has value right so all these three pieces in flipkart amazon have value right what if you know what if we can break this value right what if we break the storefront part the supplier part and the platform right which means there's a value concentration which is today happening in e-commerce that can go away and that can enable more sellers and more suppliers to participate because there is no concentration everyone has a level playing field so ondc is very simple you know this is what ondc did now if you if you followed through the last four five slides this slide is self explanatory in some ways right? ondc is saying we'll split into a buyer side app a buyer side ecosystem a seller side ecosystem so some entities will play role on the buyer side and some entities will play on the seller side and what we will do as ondc is create a specification which allows you to talk which allows a supply network to talk to buyer network right and not just between one buyer to one seller the sellers can talk to any of the buyers and any of the buyer can have access to all the sellers right which means that everyone has access to the same supply and everyone has access to the same buyers and this is what makes ondc so powerful right it's actually if you look at this system this this is similar system as how internet evolved right 
internet previously was siloed. It used to be like in a particular institution where few computers can talk, you know, in universities where few computers can talk to each other. But university computers couldn't talk to the a, a corporate computer, right? And the internet, basically, what it is, HTTP or your email, basically, what happened is somebody said, let's create a spec, a language to talk so that these two computers can talk to each other. Let's standardize that language. As I'm talking to you in English, right? So someone has standardized English language so that I can talk that language and you can understand. Same way, ONDC is saying, I will create a language. This is the language you have to talk between supply and buyer. Right? Other than that, I'm not doing anything. It's decentralized. It's democratized because all of you can participate. It's decentralized because the only thing I'm doing as an entity is providing you a spec, a specification, a, a protocol to way to talk to each other. If you have followed till now, if you understood what is there on the slide right now, you have understood ONDC almost like 80%. Right? Let me tell you that. Does anyone have any question right now? Let me know if you have any questions, right? Uh, so this basically is the core concept of ONDC. And to basically enable, uh, so, so that's the core concept, right? But there are a few other entities that ONDC has, you know, uh, sort of uh, put forward right? so that it can work, right? So there's a buyer side app. Buyer side app means you have websites and apps which basically only take orders. And supply side app is entities, apps which only take supply. They don't have a website to go and, and order. They don't have. And that's how it's in it is envisioned right now a buyer and a seller app can be same that also is possible no one stops you to have a website also play a supply side you know uh, contribution to the ondc right so ondc has a buyer side app a seller side app ecosystem it has logistics app which means delivery and dunzos can participate there right it has a gateway in between. Gateway, what does gateway do? Because a buyer and the seller has to communicate, like we have a router in internet, right? Someone, the router routes the traffic. If, if, I'm, if I'm speaking right now, what I'm speaking is coming to you through a router, right? Someone is routed. So same way the gateway does, gateway, gateway is there, to route the traffic between buyer and the seller apps. They cannot directly talk. It has to go through gateway. And registry is where all the buyers, seller, logistics app have to register. This is the place where you can find all the entities who are, who are part of this ONDC registered there with data, some data, Primarily public keys and private keys. We'll talk, we'll look into that very briefly uh, because uh, of authentication, you know, reasons and those kind of stuff. The category, the what 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 kind of are they in, uh, do are they which cities they are available? Because city location is very, very centric in ONDC. It's actually core to ONDC. Where are you selling from? You have to tell it. Which which area can you cover? You have to tell that. And then there's a reputation ledger. 
it's a central ledger where all the participants who are the buyer, logistics, seller, their reputation are the good, bad, ugly. That reputation is captured there. So that it can self heal. So that people who have bad reputation can be kicked out automatically. So buyer side app, seller side app, gateway, registry, reputation ledger, logistics apps. And then you have OCEN, which is a open credit network, right? enablement network. So all these suppliers can get credit now because the transactions are verified. They, people can see the transaction. They can see their reputation. So they are, they can be part, they can actually can be given credit for their business purposes, you know, for working capital, all those kind of stuff from OCE and right. So this is basically, if you look at this slide, this slide basically has most of the components, most of the participants, which are there in ONDC. And now registry is something which ONDC controls. So you can't be a registry participant. But you can be a buyer app, you can be a gateway, you can be a seller app, you can be a logistics app. For gateways, there are some restrictions. If you are a buyer or seller app, probably, probably you cannot be a gateway. The gateway is like a telco, like right? if you if, if I'm talking to someone, you know, the Airtel is there. Airtel is, is a gateway in some ways, right? So similar is a gateway. Gateway sees all the traffic. Gateway is very powerful. It sees all the traffic. Right. So it, it cannot be completely unregulated. But today, as of today, uh, you know, there are no major restrictions on being a gateway. Right. So that's basically is is uh, is how uh, ONDC network look like. And uh, I'll and and what so let's now look at what is possible, right? With this, once you have understood what is ONDC, right? Understood the architecture of ONDC. Once once you understood there's a buyer and a seller side. And then there is a gateway in between. Right. Suddenly, you will realize that a lot more people can participate in e-commerce. Let's look at the buyer side, right? ICICI Bank today cannot do e-commerce. They don't have suppliers. Airtel cannot do. Dream11 cannot do. All these have huge customers, huge number of customers. People come there every day. But they cannot do e-commerce as of today, right? So all these can now participate on the at least on the buyer side. They can participate. So tomorrow, if you go to Google Pay or Phone Pay, you actually can buy things. If they if, if, if since they are already talking to NDC, probably they will be part of NDC. So you can buy from Google Pay. Or, or Airtel or those kind of stuff. Now, suddenly for these companies, the cost of acquisition of a customer is very low, right? They're not looking, they're not Amazon whose cost of customer acquisition may be very high or Flipkart, right? They're people, they're, they are players who actually every day customers come because they, they come. I mean, Airtel every, every day people come or ICC people come because there are other needs, right? The cost of acquisition is very low, so they can actually operate at a very low margin, which entails that the whole e-commerce can be profitable, customers can get a better price, because the reputation, there's a set, central ledger, quality of products can be better. People can see who is what. Today, if you have a, if you're a seller on Amazon, and if you 
are also a seller on you know flipkart you cannot you cannot show your rating of amazon to flipkart customer right that's not possible that's not possible right now but in ondc you you have a central place so there you know you are you are you are not if you if you move out of amazon and move to flipkart your ratings in amazon have no value but in ondc that's not the case because your reputation is, is there in the ledger always on the supply side your rides today you only think of ola and uber suddenly you know any anyone can be a supplier on ondc they don't need to go through ola and uber taxi wala right your insurance products can can be sold on ondc your travel flight tickets your kiranas you know lo local neighborhood your agriculture products services we looking for some services locally so suddenly for consumer there's so many things which they were not we did not have access to or they have to go to one platform to another platform another platform to get all these services only on one app they can get all these services right because the same supply which airtel sees is the same supply google pay sees same supply dream 11 sees same supply paytm sees same icici bank sees from a supply perspective it's open everyone gets the same supply the same same kirana wala has access to icici bank paytm customer airtel customer google pay customer dream 11 customer it's not tied to any platform it's not ki i am today i have to go to flipkart register there then i have to go to amazon register there is not like that single place single registration your part of the holy commerce right so this is this is the impact this is what makes it powerful everyone can participate people whom you thought could not be there can now be in e-commerce and and this is what is expected to drive e-commerce from what is today to maybe 10 times more or 20 times more in next 5 years i mean do you really want to miss that i'm quite sure you don't want to so so therefore ondc has become very very important and that's why there a lot of people are interested that's why a lot of people big players are coming into it that's why there a lot of buzz and because government is involved right so if government is involved and they want to do it that's a positive thing because then it can become very very big it's not driven by few people it's driven by the whole country right so so what so this is basically the impact right supply will take the next leap the supply which was not there before is now going to come on e-commerce so supply will just dramatically change the local e-commerce the local neighborhoods whom you did not know will will be visible on ondc i mean that that, that is one of the one of the you know uh, priorities of the government the local neighborhood people e-commerce people have to come on e-commerce be part of e-commerce e-commerce demand will take next leap because all these big giants airtel and i banks all these people you know will also be enabled by e-commerce they will also be able to take orders upi because again upi is going to be one of the fundamental payment methods and may may become a core of ondc later so upi will take next leap what you see upi today just from offline you know suddenly you know all these people online again you know upi will take a next leap trust will take a next leap because you have central reputation ledger so you can trust more right 
so that's that's what makes this powerful i have one question should i need to make another application for ndc well usually uh, you know if you have a website uh, you know for example you know you know on plotch today what we are doing is that we are enabling all our websites to be ondc you know enabled so if you have a website on plotch you will have an option to connect to ondc by default so if you connect to ondc your current website will automatically become part of ondc now you may want your current website to be a buyer app or you want to be a seller app or you want to be both which is fine because if someone comes and site searches milk and you don't have milk which is fine because you get the supply from somewhere else right so you don't need to create another application now of course uh, you know in plotch we have taken that step ahead they if i don't know who is your technology provider or who which platform you are on but if they are making their platform or it is enabled uh, you know you should not need another website because the current website will be enabled one sec i will just again have the same issue yeah yeah so we have talked about what is ondc we have talked about how ondc what the impact ondc is going to create right why people are talking about it hopefully we have understood now we will talk about how how will it work how will ondc work i mean let's have a seller by what happens what's my first step next step last step right so first thing everyone has to do as i said logistic app buyer app or seller app have to register in registry you have to be part of registry if you're not part of registry you cannot play a part in ondc So then you can only play part as a supplier to a supplier app. So you cannot be a supplier app yourself. You can still play part in 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 ONDC, but by by becoming a supplier to a supplier app, right? You cannot be directly be a supplier app. If you are not directly a supplier app, you you lose some commission because you instead of you basically selling to a customer at twelve rupees, you will sell at ten rupees because the seller app. supplier app will will take 2 rupees or 3 rupees or whatever you know out of it but why why give why give that to supplier app you know well, why not yourself right so so first thing is important thing that needs to happen for you is you have to become part of a registry now it's not that simple right now because uh, in some ways it's a uh, it's a uh, it's still mechanical not automatic in nature uh but uh you know very soon you know if if uh, for example on plotch if if you have if you have website on plotch in the next 2 3 weeks you sh- you will be able to just connect to registry very quickly right so so all these platforms are becoming enabled right now uh but this is the first step that has to happen uh and when you register what data do you provide i mean that's what basically is is what you know you're seeing right now is is the data that you provide for country you have to provide country which country are you servicing from and and if you look at it you know this country why why there is a country need of country isn't it ondc india specific no no or indc the way it's been structured it can actually go global 
right? Because there's nothing in ONDC which is India centric or it's just a protocol. It's just a way, it's just a language, right? Like, like we, I am talking English right now, but I'm in a different country. English was not created in, in India, right? It's the same way, it's, it's just a language. It's a protocol which has been created by India, but that doesn't mean this protocol cannot be exported out or cannot be taken by other countries, right? So country is one of the things which is the city. If you, if, you, if you operate from all the cities, if you can service all the cities, dispatch to all the cities, then you put star there. Otherwise you will have to put your STD codes and pin codes and those kind of stuff. So what service, what can you service? What area can you service? Basically is that so basically the city is there. Which city can you service? So if you if a city on, if you only service Bangalore or Jaipur or Raipur, so you will put there Bangalore. Right. And then you have to say we type like what buyer app. I'm a buyer app or I'm a seller app, right? And then you will put some keys because if gateway takes some message from you, how do they know that it is you? Who is sending? So they will actually have to take some key from you, which is a public key, and do some algorithm to test, say, okay, okay this actually is sent by this person, right? Because it's signed in a from a private key. The private key only you have. So you take something, you sign this private key, and only and gateway will then verify with the public key and say, okay, this guy, this message has been sent by this person and been signed correctly, right? So that's why you have public key that you have to send. Any platform which you, which if you use any platform to, to, to become part of ONDC will manage your keys. They will tell you this is your public key, this is a private key and you can save it and, or you can, you know, uh, uh, use it on some other platform also, right? And it has basically a domain. So it tells you whether you're a retailer, your logistics guy, you, so it basically has that category domain, which domain do you operate in? And uh, yeah, so that's basically what you submit to a registry. I'm telling, telling this because it tells a little bit more about ONDC. That's, it can go international. It has very strong location, you know, feature, which means that you have to tell which cities you want you cover, right? And it basically has uh, keys, which you should be aware of that, you know, what is my key if you are a seller app? Because if you move from one platform to another, those keys are very handy. Now I'm gonna go a little bit deeper. Now, this is the part where maybe you may find made technical in nature, but I'm just gonna cover very, very quickly, you know, uh, uh, few things like how do buyer and seller app communicate? Basically the, the primarily four, four handshakes people do. APIs is what they call, you know, search for discovery, select, if I have selecting a product to add to the cart in it to basically initiate a checkout and confirm as the payment and order is confirmed, right? The four things, search, select, init, and confirm. Fundamentally, these four are the pillars of communication between a buyer and a seller app. These are the four, right? And what does, so this is sent by buyer. So when I say search, select, init, and confirm, this is sent by buyer to the seller app. The seller app, basically communicates with buyer app with, with similar kind of thing, on search, on select, on any turn. That's it. And it doesn't need to be done immediately. If I'm saying search, if a buyer app is saying search, the on search from seller side can come later also, but it has to be in a defined time. So it's async in nature. If you know, you know, 
uh, bit technical. It's async in nature. It's not like if I say search immediately, I'll get the result. I'll say search. The other will said, okay, I have received your request. Let me now search. And once I've searched, then I'll say on search. And then the buyer app will get all the data, right? So similarly, select on, select on, init on, confirm. So let's, now if you understood, you know, how, what gateway is, what, how, you know, the whole ONDC network is, buyer app, seller app, logistics app, gateway, registry, reputation ledger. If you know these keywords, 90% of my work is done. I think this webinar is successful. So let's now look at a transaction flow. Like, Let's say someone searches Parley G in Jaipur on a buyer app, maybe on our Airtel. Someone searches, I want Parley G and, and location is Jaipur, right? So what the first thing buyer app will do is call to the gateway. Hey, gateway, here's the search. I received Parley G in Jaipur. That's what the buyer app will communicate to the gateway, not to the seller, because he has no idea. He, ha he has to communicate to the gateway. Right? The gateway will then go to registry and say, okay, for Parley G type of product, what, what, what get, you know, give me a list of relevant suppliers. Now we don't have category still defined to the level when I when I you know when I show when I uh, you know presented the, the the history part right, the category was not that defined in that, but but that is going to become uh, you know a key part of registration that you have to tell your category. Are you a grocery supplier? Are you a fashion supplier? Do you you know which category do you play in jewelry? Which in this that right? So that when the parley G search comes and gateway asks to the registry, hey, give me a list of relevant suppliers. Then the grocery, only the grocery guys registry should give. Right? Because that's, that's, that's how, what it is. So registry will say, here's a list of relevant suppliers. And then the, what gateway will do is then call search to those suppliers only. It's a broadcast to those suppliers. It's not going to broadcast to everyone. Because if I have Parleji, you know, why would I send someone to insurance, you know, who provides insurance or travel tickets? Parleji, that the guy has no meaning, right, for them. But to a grocery, the, the grocery is where it should go, right? So it will only go to the suppliers who are registered in a grocery segment in registry, right? You only go to that, right? So that's what Gateway does. It takes the request, goes to a registry, takes, a, takes who is a relevant suppliers in, for that product, and then goes and find and say, okay, let me now search those suppliers, right? Suppliers will then do give them a product. As I said, it's async. It's not like Immediately they will get, they'll just say, okay, I have received a request and then give an on search. So again, on search will come to the gateway with the relevant products, which can, which in this case will be Parley G or it can be a Parley G plus some other, you know, biscuit brands also, because if someone looking at Parley G, they may also be interested in other business biscuit products. Right? It will, it will give those products back. Gateway will then go back to buyer app and say, here is your product. Right. So that's basically is how a way in a very simple way, how a discovery of product happens. Now this is only on search. Let's say a buyer app, after I look at the product, I select some product, you know, as a consumer, I select some product then the same buyer app will call, you know, select. When the select comes, then goes to the, goes to the 
supplier then the supplier will create a court cart and once the buyer says i want to you know create a checkout then the, the on the seller side the checkout will be created and then the payment is interesting and and that is where you know uh, the that's where you know it's a little bit interesting in the way that payment can be collected by the party there's one question which actually naturally comes you know who will take the payment does the seller app takes the payment or the buyer app take the payment so payment can be collected by either party but payment flow completes only on the buyer app right because seller app can give a upi link or a upi code to the buyer app and say okay collect the payment from this you know for this upi so buyer app will take and collect the payment in upi but the payment actually goes to the seller right it doesn't come to the buyer app now here is where some negotiation has to happen ki who will collect so buyer app will say i'll collect seller app will say okay you can collect or it may say no you cannot collect but i will collect and buyer app can say no you will not collect if they don't agree it, it actually can fail the order can fail because that negotiation and agreement is very critical who will collect the payment now these are you may have lot of questions around it this is the flow that is there today i'm quite sure the next version and the version after that will be much clearer and much more smoother in some ways because these negotiations can fail you know some you know everyone will say i want to collect i will not let you collect right it may happen that way and fees you know there's another question people have okay let's let's okay maybe i a payment will come to me or to the other party you know maybe there's agreement and you know i still can understand but how do i make money in this all this how do as a buyer i pay make money how do i as a seller i pay make money everyone has to make money so let's say a product of 10 rupees is where the supplier the 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 seller the seller on record of the product is selling right now 10 rupees seller app will say okay let me add 2 rupees to it right and i will say the price of this product is 12 rupees and most of the times seller app will do the logistics so they will have logistics now logistics is another piece where transactions you know there's there's a specification how seller app or buyer app can in, you know talk to logistics app but that is a topic for another day which i'm not going to cover in this uh, but let's assume there is a specification already which you know which allows seller app to talk to a logistics app right uh, so 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 seller seller will basically say that my logistics fee is 2 rupees right so 12 plus 2 is what you know logistics fee plus my prices right now ondc to fee today is zero ond doesn't have a fee but there is uh, there is uh, you know possibility that ondc will charge fees per transaction may 0.5% 0.1% i don't know i mean but there is a concept there is a uh you know there is a way you know when dc today actually saying that they can charge fees right so on dc fee may be there may not be there but let's assume it's rupee 1 right and buyer app can say can assert that i want a finder fee is called it is called a finder fee in on dc 
So it is rupees three, right? So a customer will pay twelve rupees, which is what supplier app said, two rupees for logistics, three rupees for for a finder fee and ONDC fee of one rupees, right? So that's how the structure, the pricing structure is there in ONDC. There's a logistics fee, there's a ONDC fee, there's a buyer fee, finder fee, and then there's a seller commission. And that's how you make money. But how do you settle? So one of the questions which people have, and our buyer has collected 16 rupees here. No, it's not 16, sorry, 18 rupees. So how will 14 rupees get paid to, to the seller? And that's basically is sort of a challenge as of today. I think it's not clearly figured out in my view that the payment settlement actually happens offline. But this is a big piece, uh, at least in my view, uh, it's something that I think a lot of people will not agree that, you know, uh, buyer, how will I get money from buyer, uh, seller, uh, seller app will say, uh, seller app has collected, buyer app will say, how will I collect from all these small, small guys, payment and those kinds of stuff, because offline is, is challenging, right? So somewhere the settlement piece has to be automated and may come in the next versions of ONDC, but as of today, the settlement between parties happens offline. How do you register on NDC? You can uh, you can you can ping us. We 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 can help you get connected to NDC, or you can directly reach them at team at ondc.org, and that's an email address that is available publicly. And uh, the Slack channels there there are you know Discord channels uh, where you know a lot of activity happens. We are part of that. Um, I'm quite sure if you reach out to them, if 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 they find you appropriate right now, because a lot of a lot of uh, you know today it's it's not a very automatic process, so you will have to write to them. You know they will ask you to fill out a form and those kind of stuff, and then they may make you part of the Slack channel and those kind of stuff, and uh, you know. Or, or you basically, for example, Plotch provides ONDC support, right? Uh, so you can reach out to us also and we can help you enable, get enabled, ONDC enabled, right? So that's, that's something that uh, basically in Plotch, uh, you can become, you know, you can create a sales channel, which is, you know, this is still work in progress, but very soon you should be able to connect to ONDC very quickly. And you can get a buy, you know, ONDC buyer app and seller app, which basically allows you to do a lot of things like settlement, ONDC registration, you know, creation of order, confirm all the APIs, all, everything is is there that uh, is there available in Plotch, right? Uh, so you don't have to do anything. Uh, yeah, that's basically is. Uh, I'm think I'm almost on dot right now. So yeah, one hour here. Uh, any questions? I'll just take quickly some take some questions. Uh, Parley G search from gateway would location specific correct? Yes, yes, yes. So as uh, Manish, uh, you're right. Parley G search will be location specific because when gateway is asking for a supplier, you know, from a registry the location filter is applied because the buyer has a location filter. A buyer app will have a location filter. So, so Chapur will be, you know, part of the search. Uh, so Chapur suppliers will be shown. That's how it works. Yes, you're right. How does the buyer app look like? Same, you know, same your apps today. You go to Flipkart, Amazon, same app. No changes. So you, if you go to Airtel, you will see this, you know, as if you have come to an e-commerce website. You will not notice any difference. As a consumer, you will not notice any difference at all. Yeah.
Okay, let me take a few more questions very quickly. Where are all the details that ONDC mentioned? The ONDC.org has, uh, website has information, but uh, there are a lot of information which is very specific to the platform like APIs and those kinds of stuff, which, uh, you know, um, uh, you know, you can drop me an email, I I'll, I'll can share that those resources, whatever is in the public domain, I can share. Uh, so if you can, if you can drop me at manoj.plot.ai, any, anything you want to, I want to know more about, you know, you know, API specification, I want to know more about, you know, or if you want to get a copy of this, of this uh, presentation, you know, we can send it to you, there are no issues about it. So the drop in email. If I have a store on Shopify, can I register as a seller app on ONDC? Uh, I don't know, Shopify is still a part of ONDC right now, but there are some talks going on. The Shopify may be part of ONDC. But as of today, uh, at least uh, as we are part of ONDC ecosystem, I have not seen Shopify. So maybe they might come later. Why big giants agreed to sell join ONDC when it will break their monopoly? Well, uh, to be very frank, if you're not part of ONDC, you will start losing out, right? So, so, so I don't think they have any choice. I mean, uh, if if a lot of people transact on ONDC, uh, you know, why not become part of it? Rather than being sidelined, right? So, so that's basically the short answer for me. What data is seller will be seeing in this seller dashboard? So, seller will see catalog. They will see orders. They will see shipments because most of the time, logistics, the shipment, everything has to be handled by the seller side, right? Uh, so, that's the expected behavior in ONDC. So you'll see shipments, orders, like you see in any, any you know, website platform. You'll see the same data, products, catalog, customers. You'll see your, uh, you know, orders, shipments, yeah. We are a private label brand selling on Amazon Flipkart. Also, we have a website on Shopify. Do we need to register on ONDC to participate in ONDC? Yes, you will have to register. Amazon and Flipkart, I'm not sure they are giving you access to ONDC right now. Um, but yeah, if you, if you see, see a lot of, lot of uh, participants in ONDC today are, uh, uh, in some ways, people who are enablers in some ways. So the people who are, you know, platforms who are looking at only a supply side, that I will get more and more and more supply. And the you know, people who are saying, I will get more and more buyers, right? The, the, the smaller uh, sellers, uh, the neighborhood, most likely we will use a seller app to come to NDC. They may not come directly on NDC, right? So you will need some kind of seller app. You will need some kind of platform like Plotch to, to enable you to come on to ONDC. Coming directly on ONDC as of today might be challenging because you will have to integrate. Although it's a simple ecosystem that I said, it's not that simple because authentication, you know, the, the whole signature verification, the APIs, the whole lot of data that I have to send. There's a... It's actually daunting in some ways. So, so you you will need some help definitely. Uh, no, unless you want to directly integrate with ONDC network, which needs that you will need some tech resources. You will need like probably five to ten people tech team to to be able to do that. Yeah. Uh, uh. My website is under development stage from plots. Do I require to mention the team to connect regarding ONDC? 
No, basically, you don't need to do anything if you're on Plotch. Uh, in next two weeks, uh, you will get an option to connect to NDC if you have a website on Plotch and you can connect to NDC. Don't need to do anything. It's as simple as that. So we need to convince buyers to install the app. If you are a buyer side app that you're building where you're getting consumers, customers, yeah, you will need to ask your you know customers to install it, your app, right? And it's not an app, 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 app. When I say app, it's not a mobile app. It's actually can be a website, right? It doesn't need to be a mobile app. And if you're on the seller side, you don't need a, you don't need to worry about buyers. One of the good things about ONDC is that that you don't need to worry about orders. Your, you know, the the order the ONDC network will give you orders. So if you have supply, if you if you you just push that supply on ONDC network, that's it. You don't have to spend money on advertising. Yeah, I think uh, I think uh, that's what it is. Uh, I'll just sh share a, uh, a simple form if you guys can fill it. Uh, maybe I'll just type in the chat. Uh, basically, I just want to know. One sec. I just want to know if uh, if what kind of you know, let's say we do a, a follow up ONDC webinar. Uh, you know what what more do you need to know i mean do you want to know more about payments do you want to know more about settlement technical specification because we can also do a webinar on deep dive into technic technology of ondc where you know we can deep in, deeper into apis and how we can you integrate if you're looking to integrate with with ondc directly that's fine with us you you know we'll we can help you in that also so so if, you, if so basically a simple form if uh, you know, which basically, sorry, one second, let me just uh, get a copy of that form. You guys can fill it. Uh, it will help us, you know, structuring our next, you know, uh, webinar. Yeah. And hopefully you guys liked it. And thank you for your time. Uh, ONDC is definitely very powerful. Whether you are in Plotch or not Plotch, be part of it. It's very interesting. Don't miss the bus. You can really take your business from X to 10X. So yeah, thanks again. I'll stop here. Thank you.